Gabby G A flashback Friday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic, magical, wonderful start to your weekend. I know I am, even though I am running around like a chicken with her head cut off. Um, it's just going to be a very busy weekend. I have friends coming in from Arkansas to visit for the weekend, and I'm really, really excited because I'm like trying to plan all this stuff because they've actually never been up here. Um, I usually go down there, or we usually go on a trip or whatever, and so they've never actually come to my house and hung out with me, and so I'm really excited for that because I'm trying to think of all the places that I enjoy going around town and all the places that they don't have at home, and so it's just been crazy, and I'm OCD, so like I've been cleaning my house and doing stuff and making sure that they have everything they need and to be comfortable and then trying to figure out where we're going to go and what we're going to do. In all reality, we're going to probably end up here drinking, to be honest. Um, and just cutting it loose and having a good time, which is typically how we roll anyway. We really, we, Matt and I like to drink these drinks called gummy bears. Um, we've kind of, I don't know if that's the technical term for them or not, but we, that's what we've named them because that's kind of what they taste like. Um, and they taste like Kool-Aid and they get you in trouble. Um, so my goal this weekend is to not get critically hurt. I fall over enough anyway. You add a little vodka to that. Um, it's probably best if I just sit in the chair or on the ground. Probably the ground. The ground would be a good spot. Um, cause that is a sure fire way of me not getting hurt, even though I'll probably find some way for it to happen. Um, cause then I'm like eye level with my coffee table and my coffee table and I have a love hate relationship anyway. So it could possibly and potentially be a disaster, but it's going to be a fun disaster. <laughs> but we are not here to talk about weekend plans and gummy bears and Javi falling over. We are here for GA Flashback Friday where I recap one of our past episodes of Ghost Adventures and this week I'm so excited because we went to Prospect Place Mansion in Trinway, Ohio. Oh my god, this mansion though. Um, it's not very far from me, mind you, and it's, it's like I think five or six hours maybe um, and I want to go. Um, and I know that one of my fellow admins is going on an investigation there and I am so tempted to hop my little butt in the car and drive and meet her there and go. Um, I love this place. It is so dark. It is so haunted. It is so freaky. OMG to the G. I, I can't even deal. Like I can't deal. Um, as always, before we get into all of that fun mess, I want to give you a little bit of history about this place and boy oh boy does it have a history. So Prospect Place Mansion was originally built in 1856. Um, it started construction in 1855 and was immediately burnt to the ground upon completion for the bricklayer to have more work. So they rebuilt it and it was finally completed in 1857. And it was a home for, um, it was a major stop for slaves. It was a station house for slaves and during the Underground Railroad, and um, it was also a place of like horror and tragedy. Like nothing good came out of this mansion. Like it was built on good intentions, and nothing good came out of it. It had so many deaths and tragic deaths. Um, a bounty hunter was killed in the barn in the '60s. It was like home to like satanic worshippers that. Did like sacrifices in the ballroom like it was just a mess like it was built with such good intentions and you know built to be this safe this this home and this place and the safe haven for slaves and and you know to be a place where people could live and grow up and thrive and it was just a place of sorrow like nothing good came out of this like when they're doing the interviews like all you could hear about were you know tragedy the little girl fell off the balcony and was put down a well and you know, until her, until they could give her a proper burial because she died in the winter. And I guess that they would like put ice water and stuff down the well to try to keep everything cold. And so they put the little girl down there to like preserve her body so that until they could break ground, like break the frozen ground and give her a proper burial. Like what the F? I don't know. And then the bounty hunter that was killed in the barn and, um, the you know the satanic worshipers like whenever you have tragic death and satanic worshiping and 
you know, in, in bad death, like a bounty, like a murder, it's just a breeding ground. And they even made the comment that it was like very similar to Bobby Mackey. If you have tragic death, um, a well, satanic worshiping, seriously. I love how this stuff kind of like follows them around. Um, but it was just, it's just a lot, there's a lot there that breeds haunting. Um, and lockdown proved that. Um, when the guys first started their lockdown, they started just in the main house and they were, you know, kind of calling out to the little girl who had passed away and they get a very distinct, like little girl's laughter or a giggle or play, like, I don't know, a playful noise that sent chills down my spine. Cause you didn't hear it on, an, on a digital recorder. You heard it on the camera's audio. So that means you heard it with your own ears. The first time I ever seen this episode, I heard it before they even said anything before they even enhanced anything, I heard it and it gave me chills, like chills down my spine. Um, and then there was a light anomaly that kind of went with it, like this little ball of light. This place is an orb infested crazy house. Um, there was tons of orbs, there was tons of light anomalies, like there was tons of things that affected the guys. Um, some of the EVPs was, there was an EVP that said, come here some more. Um, and another energy orb and it kind of affected Nick and Zach just feeling drained they kind of got the static electricity feeling like something was passing through them um, and Zach was provoking the crap out of them they were in the ballroom where all the satanic worshiping had taken place and he was just provoking the snot out of them I know Zach provoking color me surprised and they all began to feel like drained and confused Nick kind of had the same effect that he had at Moon River Brewing Company where he kind of zoned out and went into another realm. I don't know what happens when he does that, but it is freaky to watch because you can just see a change come over him. He doesn't really look the same. And, and this was all after they had seen several light anomalies, you know, kind of uh, floating around Nick and Zach. Um, and then in the same room, Zach went to show us how dark it was in there and so Aaron turned off night vision and Zach kind of hit like this bench and it kind of clocked his shin and it brought him to the ground and yes we know we all laughed and I personally laughed because that is me like I laugh because that happens to me all the time I'm constantly running into crap and I'm constantly hurting myself and constantly I get bruises that I don't even know how I got them like that's the sad part um and so I I laugh at other people because it's not me it gives it a chance to not be me I know it hurts I, I get it um and apparently the spirits thought it was funny too because they captured a laugh like this evil kind of like sinister laugh and I thought you know what even though that's a scary ass piece of evidence um it's kind of funny that even the spirits think that it's funny that you fell over um, but I, I mean, it's pitch black in there. I can't blame them. I would be dead because I fall over crap in the daylight. Like I can't imagine being left alone in the dark. You couldn't leave me alone in the dark, not in the pitch black darkness. I would kill myself. Um, but even though Zach got hurt and it was funny, it yielded a piece of evidence because the spirits thought it was funny too. And then they started laughing. Um, then toward the end of lockdown, they kind of all split up. And so the majority of lockdown was actually spent in the ballroom where the satanic rituals took place. And then at 1 a.m., Zach came, was came and got by the caretaker who sits on the board and he took him to the barn where the bounty hunter um, had been hung. And a lot of people had been attacked in the barn. A demonologist had went in there and kind of was almost possessed or had felt a demonic presence in there. Um, and so Zach, of course, was all over that. So he went in there by himself and provoked the crap out of whatever was in that barn. And he got some really loud knocking noises. He had something thrown at him. There was footsteps that were heard and the camera's um, infrared light had kind of sh like turned and shifted like by a vibration that was heard. And Zach was not moving and he was the only one in there. Um, but the most like scary piece of evidence he got was like kind of this... Like, it was a hiss, and it was evil sounding, and it was not okay. Um, and it scared Zach. Like, you could tell that it really kind of shook him to the core. Um, because he felt really uncomfortable in there. Aaron was 
in the basement of the main house alone and he didn't really get a lot of evidence I think a lot of it was directed towards Zach because Nick had went to the top of the house to the watchtower that was in the house um, because this was a station house for slaves and so back then they would have these lights that you know you could they would put in the windows and it would signal for the slaves and the slaves knew that then they could um, come to the house it was safe to come into the home and so the bounty hunter is always looking for slaves um, and he was killed in this barn because they were protecting the slaves this was a safe haven for the Underground Railroad and so the that light is going to signal that spirit to be to think you know oh there's slaves here you know and it's going to bring back all of that negative energy that's associated with his death because he was killed trying to capture these slaves and Aaron went up and turned the lantern on to try to provoke whatever was in the barn and it freaking worked because all the activity moved from the house to the barn and Zach got all of it um overall this episode had a lot of really good evidence um, nothing like so major that you were just blown away, but it was, it was enough to, it was chilling evidence. It's not like it was evidence like breakthrough evidence or amazing never before seen stuff. It was just chilling and it backed up the claims that were in the home. And I think that whenever you can get evidence that just simply backs up what other people are saying, that's good enough for an investigation. Yeah, you want to be the one to capture that one piece of evidence that nobody else has. Um, but that may not always happen. As long, in my book, as long as you can capture, one, you can capture evidence. Two, you can capture evidence that backs up claims of what other people are saying, then you have a successful investigation. Because now you can say in your own mind that yes, this place is haunted, this place is haunted by something evil. Um, and it's a really active location. So I absolutely love Prospect Place. Like I said, I'm very tempted to get in the car and go and check it out because I want to make that barn my slave. Like I want to own that barn. I want to go in there and taunt the living crap out of that bounty hunter. Um, and I know Bobby does too. And if we have our way about it, we will. And we will do it together because that barn needs to experience that whole boatload of craziness. Like they thought Zach was scary. They thought Zach was intimidating and taunting and evil. You ain't seen nothing yet. Like you just wait. It could get crazy on a whole new level. Just saying. But that is all I have for GA Flashback Friday. I will be back on Monday. For GA Recap Monday, where I get to recap the brand new episode of Ghost Adventures Aftershocks. I am so excited. I cannot wait. Um, this one is going to hit home for me because there is um, apparently going to be an autistic child on the episode. And um, as some of you know, my daughter is autistic. And so this is going to hit home for me because it's personal. It affects me. Um, and children on the spectrum don't always get understood. Um, I know that for, you know, I know that personally that my daughter doesn't, you know, is very misunderstood. Um, I understand her, her, you know, her friends and her family understand her. Um, but to the Nate, to, to strangers, she's very misunderstood. Um, because she's very high functioning. When you look at her, you can't tell she has autism. So, um, but when you spend time with her, that's when you see it. Hers is a lot, hers is socially and emotionally based. So, you know, she, she gets overwhelmed and overstimulated and, um, it's just going to be very interesting to peer into the world of another autistic child. I always enjoy hearing other family stories because it helps me understand my own and, um, it gives me insight into different aspects of the spectrum. So it's very interesting. I'm very excited to do it. I cannot wait um, to recap that episode on Monday. So until then, stay happy, stay healthy, have a fantastic, wonderful, magical weekend. I will see you guys on Monday. Much love and happiness.